Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Happy Monday, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here with your observances for today, October 4th, 2021. Our first observance should be observed all month long. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. As you peruse the aisles of your favorite department store, you start to notice a trend. Pink scarves, pink socks, pink shirts, and pink coffee mugs. Then pink blenders, pink vacuums. And is that a pink microwave? Ah, yes. The pink explosion is everywhere, and that can only mean one thing. October is upon us, and everyone is preparing for National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It is a reminder that there is a gruesome disease that is out to get to second base. These sweet pink pastels are there to nudge us, saying, hey, don't forget to examine your breasts. Get your doctor to check them out too, and schedule a mammogram. After all, about 1 in 8 U.S. women and 1 in 1,000 U.S. men will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of their lifetime. And being proactive in this fight is crucial. There are some guidelines though. Breast self-exams are to be done monthly. This way you can become familiar with each ridge, curve, bump, and lump so that if something was to change, you'd notice it right away. The second guideline is to have your doctor examine your breasts. Find a doctor you're comfortable with because he or she will be looking at them rather closely every year. And the last guideline is to get a mammogram. This only applies to certain people, women over 40 to mid late 30s if breast cancer runs in their family. So there you have it folks, monthly breast self exams, annual doctor exams, and a mammogram. These three things are your best bet for catching breast cancer in its earliest stages. Trust your judgment when it comes to your body. Don't ever feel like you're overreacting. If you think you feel something in your breasts, and if it doesn't feel right, have it checked out. The worst or the best thing that can happen is that you got it checked and it turned out to be nothing. So be sure to show your breast cancer awareness by wearing pink all month long. Our next observance is National Cinnamon Bun Day. This warm bun swirls together a yeasty dough and sugar and cinnamon, served with coffee or tea, and enjoyed with a good book, a friend, or a dance party. Hey, don't judge. Despite all the sugar in the recipes, cinnamon comes with many benefits. It's loaded with antioxidants. It protects cells from free radicals that may play a role in heart disease and cancer. It also helps reduce inflammation. Cinnamon may lessen or help fight infections too. These properties are also benefits of antioxidants. Another benefit includes reducing the risk of heart disease by lowering blood pressure and bad cholesterol. One of the most essential benefits of cinnamon though is how it affects blood sugar. It may help improve sensitivity to hormone insulin, assisting people with diabetes to treat their condition. While we don't recommend getting all the cinnamon solely through cinnamon buns, it's a nice to know it's available. So how do we observe Cinnamon Bun Day? Make some delicious cinnamons! Or maybe visit your favorite coffee shop and order one up. You can even share. It's the best way to celebrate Cinnamon Bun Day. So do you like cinnamon buns? And if you do, do you drink them with coffee or hot cocoa? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance is a yummy one. It's National Taco Day. Mmm, I love tacos. Get one 
two, or three on National Taco Day. On October 4th, the day recognizes the savory tortilla stuffed with fillings. It doesn't have to be a Tuesday, so get out and enjoy your favorite. The history of tacos predates the arrival of Europeans in Mexico. Anthropological evidence shows the native people living in the lake region of Valley of Mexico traditionally ate tacos filled with small fish. At the time of the Spanish conquistadors, Bernal Diaz del Castillo documented the first taco feast enjoyed by Europeans. Hernan Cortez arranged this meal for his captains in Coyacan. It is unclear why the Spanish used the word taco to describe this native food. One suggests the origin of the word a taco, meaning stuff or to stuff. Whether you prefer soft or hard shell tortillas, most agree tacos satisfy a snack craving. However, there are many ways to make this delicious meal. Consider that many are filled with seasoned, lean meats and vegetables. Tacos go beyond delicious. Fish tacos and shrimp tacos are grilled with seafood and add a whole other flavor profile. Ask for grilled chicken and hold the cheese. And you know what? Many restaurants offer special deals on this food holiday. So how do we observe National Taco Day? Well, it might not be a Tuesday, but nevertheless, it's time to have some tacos. So go out to your favorite Mexican restaurant and order up some tacos, or maybe make some at home. So do you like tacos? And if you do, what do you like to eat in it? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. And for our last observance for today is National Golf Lovers Day. National Golf Lovers Day on October 4th provides an opportunity for golf enthusiasts to swing down the fairway at least one more time during the season. While celebrating the day, you might notice it is sometimes also referred to as National Golf Day. Since 1952, the PGA has held a charity event each year for National Golf Day, which is held on different days each year. The modern day of golf may have originated in the 15th century Scotland. However, it is unclear and very much debated as to its ancient origins. The world's oldest golf tournament is the Open Championship. The first tournament played is on October 17, 1860 at Prestwood Golf in Ashire, Scotland. So how do we observe National Golf Lovers Day? In many parts of the country, golfers hit the links all year long. However, in more northern regions, courses will close due to cold temperatures preventing golfers from chasing the elusive hole-in-one. While you can, get out there and golf a round or two. Invite some friends to join you. And you know what? It could be mini golf too. So go out there and have fun as you celebrate National Golf Lovers Day. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history, Today, in 1957, the Soviet Union launches Sputnik 1, the first artificial Earth satellite in elliptical low Earth orbit. Sputnik 1 was the first artificial Earth satellite. It was launched into elliptical low Earth orbit by USSR on the 4th of October 1957 as part of the Soviet space program. It orbited for three weeks before its batteries died and then orbited suddenly for two more months before it fell back into the atmosphere on January 4, 1958. It was a polished metal sphere, 58 centimeters or 23 inches in diameter with four external radio antennas to broadcast radio pulses. Its radio signal was easily detectable by radio amateurs, and the 65-degree orbital inclination and the duration of its orbit made its flight path cover virtually the entire inhabited Earth. The satellite's unanticipated success participated the American Sputnik crisis and triggered the space race. As part of the Cold War, the launch was the beginning of a new era of political, military, technological, and scientific developments. The word Sputnik is Russian for satellite when interpreted in astronomical context. Its other meanings are spouse or traveling companion. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. 
Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Susan Sarandon, born October 4th, 1946 in New York City, New York. This American actress won the Academy Award for Best Actress in her role in Dead Man Walking in 1996. Her other major films include Thelma and Louise, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, Anywhere But Here, Elizabeth Town, and Enchanted. She plays actress Bette Davis in the FX series Feud, Bette and Joan. Before she was famous, she attended Catholic University of America in 1970. She made her film debut in Drama Joe. She turns 74 years old today. Wow, happy birthday Susan Sarandon. Our next notable figure born today is Russell Simmons. Born October 4th, 1957 in Queens, New York. This American rapper and entrepreneur co-founded the hip-hop music label Def Jam and also created successful clothing lines Fat Farm, Argyle Culture, and American Classics. Before he was famous, he attended City College of New York, but left to pursue his passion of helping to promote local musicians. He has went on to become one of the richest figures in the hip-hop community, with a net worth of $340 million since 2011. He turns 63 years old today. Happy birthday, Russell Simmons. Another notable figure born today is Ned Luke. Born October 4, 1958 in Danville, Illinois. This American voice and television actor is best known for his voice and motion capture model of Michael DeSanta from the hit video game Grand Theft Auto V. Before he was famous, he landed his first voice and acting job in 1991 as the voice of Raffles in Rover Dangerfield. He also appeared in television series like Angel Street, Guiding Light, and NYPD Blue early in his career. He's also appeared in high-profile shows such as Law & Order, Special Victims Unit, All My Children, Diagnosis Murder, and Jag. He turns 62 years old today. Happy birthday, Ned Luke. An additional notable figure born today is Alicia Silverstone. Born October 4th, 1976 in San Francisco, California. This American actress and animal rights activist famously played Cher Horowitz in the cult classic Clueless. Her performance in The Crush earned her an MTV Movie Award and in 2020, she began starring on the Netflix series The Babysitter's Club. Before she was famous, she acted in Domino's Pizza commercials and appeared in several other commercials from a young age. She won the role of Cher in Clueless in 1995 after gaining recognition in appearing in three of Aerosmith's music videos. And if I might add, she also played Batgirl in the movie Batman and Robin. She turns 44 years old today. Happy birthday, Alicia Silverstone. And now our last notable figure born today is Dakota Johnson, born October 4th, 1989 in Austin, Texas. This American actress had her breakout television role as Kate Fox on Ben and Kate. She gained further recognition through her role as Anastasia Steele in the 2015 film Fifty Shades of Grey. Before she was famous, she made her film debut at the age of 10 in the 1999 film Crazy in Alabama. She has also had supporting roles in the films 21 Jump Street and The Social Network. She turns 31 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Dakota Johnson! Happy birthday, everyone! Discovery Learners as we explore a new place of the week. This week we are traveling to Guatemala. And you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? 
Well, yes, that's the Guatemala National Anthem. Now, as you give that a listen to, let's learn a little more about the Guatemalan flag. This nation's flag is vertically striped, blue, white, and blue. When used for official purposes, it incorporates the national coat of arms in the center. The Guatemalan flag shares these colors with El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Honduras. But the Guatemalan coat of arms was very different. It features a principal symbol of the national bird, the Quetzal. Although the scroll on which the Quetzal rested on contained the date of Central American independence, which reads September 15, 1821. A wreath and a cross rifles and sabers complete the design. The current iteration of the Guatemalan flag has been in use since December 26, 1997. Wow, pretty interesting flag you got there, Guatemala. Now let's learn a little more about this nation. Guatemala is a country located in Central America, with Mexico to the north and northwest, Belize to the northeast, Honduras to the southeast, and the Pacific Ocean and El Salvador to the south. The name Guatemala is believed to come from the Aztec language rather than Mayan. It means the land of trees. Guatemala's official name is Republica de Guatemala, which means Republic of Guatemala. Its form of government is a republic with one legislative house, the Congress of the Republic. Its head of state is a president. Its capital is Guatemala City. The official language of Guatemala is Spanish, and the most popular religion in Guatemala is Catholicism. The main monetary unit of Guatemala is the Quetzal. Seven Guatemalan Quetzals equals one U.S. dollar. The current population of Guatemala is 15,712,000 people. Guatemala has a total area of 42,042 square miles. That's around the same size as the U.S. state of Louisiana. The main exports of Guatemala are sugar, coffee, petroleum, textiles, bananas, and other fruits. Wow, Guatemala seems like a pretty interesting place. And I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure you're tuning in every day to Ability to Learn as we teach you more about Guatemala. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the jaguar. The jaguar is the third largest cat in the world. Tiger and lion are the first two. And it's the largest wild cat that lives in the Americas. It can be found in North, Central, and South America in the wide variety of ecosystems, rainforests, swamps, grasslands, shrub woodlands, and forests. Jaguars are endangered species. Around 5,000 animals are left in the wild. People hunt them because of their beautiful fur and because they kill livestock on nearby farms. Besides intentional killing, number of jaguars is decreasing because of habitat destruction. Here are some interesting facts about the jaguar. Jaguars are large cats. They can weigh up to 200 to 250 pounds and reach 5 to 7 feet in length. Whoa, that's a big cat. They have tan or orange fur covered with black spots arranged in rosettes, which means the spots are arranged in the shape of a rose. Some jaguars are melanistic, which means that they are almost entirely black, and at a close distance, you can see their spots. The name jaguar is derived from the Indian word yagyar, which means he who kills in a single leap. Jaguars are ambush predators that kill their victims using the element of surprise. They will pierce the skull of an animal and kill it with a single bite. They can eat 85 different types of animals, fish, caimans, capybaras, peccaries, tapirs, are usually on the jaguar's menu. Although jaguars eat meat almost exclusively, 
They can eat avocados occasionally. Jaguars are nocturnal, which means they hunt at night, and solitary animals, which means they live on their own. Anaconda is the only natural enemy of the jaguar. Worst enemies of jaguars are humans. Unlike most cats, jaguars like to spend their time in the water, and they are excellent swimmers. They climb trees easily and mark their territory by scratching on the bark. The size of their territory depends on the availability of food. When food is abundantly present, they hunt in smaller radius. Jaguars that live in areas where food is scarce need to walk long distances to find more food. Jaguar pregnancies usually last up to 100 days and usually produce about 2 to 3 cubs. Cubs are blind at birth and they depend on their mother in the first few months of their life completely. With 3 months, they start eating meat, and with 2 years, they become completely independent from their mothers. Jaguars live between 12 to 15 years in the wild, and up to 25 years in captivity. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the aloe vera. Aloe vera is a type of succulent plant, a plant with thick leaves that originates from the Mediterranean region. There are 240 varieties of aloe vera plant that can be found throughout the European, African, Asian, and the American continents. Aloe vera grows in dry and hot climates and on well-drained soil. Aloe vera is a popular and often cultivated plant because of its potential medical properties. Nutrients and compounds isolated from aloe vera are widely exploited in cosmetics and the pharmaceutical industries. Besides that, people often cultivate aloe vera as an ornamental plant. Here are some interesting facts about the aloe vera. Most types of aloe vera don't have stems. The plant usually grows 24 to 39 inches in height. Leaves of the aloe vera grow upright and form a rosette. They are green or grayish in color. Leaves are long, thick, fleshy, and serrated on the edges. They are sometimes covered in white spots. Yellow flowers appear on long spikes during the spring and summer. Typical pollinators of the aloe vera flowers are long-beaked birds such as hummingbirds in the Americas and sunbirds in the African continent. Aloe vera lives in symbiosis, which means mutual beneficial relationship, with fungi. They live inside aloe vera's roots and facilitate the extraction of nutrients from the soil, and the aloe provides them with food in return. Aloe vera is also known as burn plant because it suits burns on the skin, and the lily of the desert because of the habitat where they can be found. Aloe vera is also known as the plant of immortality. In ancient Egypt, they have been used as part of the burial rituals. Aloe vera is used in food industry for production of yogurts and different beverages. Aloe vera is used in the cosmetic industry for the manufacture of lotions, shampoos, makeups, and soaps. Seeds of the aloe vera plant can be used as biofuel. Out of 240 known varieties, Four types of aloe vera are commercially exploited for the production of gels, capsules, and other products used to improve human health. A jelly-like substance from the leaves contains 75 different minerals, vitamins, amino acids, and enzymes that are beneficial for human health. The aloe vera plant is a rich source of saponis, compounds which possess antimicrobial properties compounds that fight against bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Aloe vera is used in folk medicine, as laxatives, for treatment of sunburns, and as a remedy for diabetes, osteoporosis, epilepsy, and asthma. Despite its global popularity and widely accepted belief that aloe vera is one of the healthiest plants on the planet, recent medical studies suggest that oral ingestion of aloe vera may induce diarrhea, abdominal cramping, and even hepatitis in humans. Aloe vera has a long life expectancy. It can survive up to 100 years in the wild. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. 
the word of the day. Today's word is precipitated. It is spelled P-R-E-C-I-P-I-T-A-T-E-D. It's a verb. It means cause an event or situation, typically one that is undesirable, to happen suddenly, unexpectedly, or prematurely. Precipitated. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is capricious. It's an adjective. It means given to sudden and uncountable changes of mood or behavior. Capricious. Hola, Discovery Learners. So, y'all, do my extra list. Hi, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher, Liz. Aquí es su palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es maíz. 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 Which means corn. Maíz. Corn. Maíz. Corn. You can use this word in the phrase. Me gustan las tortillas del maíz. Me gustan las tortillas del maíz. Me gustan las tortillas del maíz. Which means, I like corn tortillas. Me gustan las tortillas del maíz. I like corn tortillas. Me gustan las tortillas de maíz. I like corn tortillas. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying, Me gustan las tortillas de maíz. Which means, I like corn tortillas. ¿Cómo se dice corn en español? Maíz. Sí, muy bien. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish Word of the Week here on Ability to Learn. Hello, Discovery Learners. It's me, Andrew, again, with some spooky movies to watch this week. First up is Enchanted. This film has a rating of PG and was made in the year 2007. It's a musical with a 1 hour and 47 minute runtime. It stars Amy Adams, Patrick Dempsey, and birthday girl Susan Sarandon. And you can find it on YouTube. Our next offering is Batman and Robin. This PG-13 movie was made in 1997. It's an action comedy with a 2 hour and 5 minute runtime. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, George Clooney, Uma Thurman, and another birthday girl, Alicia Silverstone, and is available on HBO Max. Next up is Monster House. This 2006 movie has a rating of PG. It's a horror comedy with a 1 hour and 31 minute runtime. It stars John Hedder, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and Steve Buscemi. And you can find it on Netflix. This week's spooktacular cinematic work of art is Adam's Family Values. This 1993 film has a rating of PG-13. It's a comedy with a 1 hour and 34 minute runtime. It was directed by Barry Seinfeld. The music is by Mark Shaman. It's a film adaptation from the classic TV show. It stars Angelica Houston, Christopher Lloyd, Christina Ricci, and the late great Raul Julia. And you can find it on YouTube. Adam's Family Values. What an amazing sequel. It's one of the few sequels that surpasses the first film because they were able to divide the stellar cast up and still give each one enough screen time so that they can show the character's development and story and the addition of Pubert, the newest member of the Adams Family. It's a macabre stylization that contrasts so well with Joan Cusack's Barbie-esque Debbie. 
It's a wonderful score, is as exciting and playful as the first film, and such a strong performance by the late Raul Julia makes this spectacular film a cinematic work of art. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday, starting at 1 p.m. Ah, the creatures of the night. What beautiful music they make. You have survived to the end of the episode of Ability to Learn. And I hope you didn't just learn something, but had fun as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you are notified when a new video is posted. Because a video a day keeps the boogeyman away. <laughs> This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.